that's not normal. I think it needs a new hood pull. I bet you this cable's frayed. Oh yeah, wow. Look at that. So today, uh, what we're gonna do, uh, this one's just hanging by a thread pretty much. Um, we are going to replace this whole cable assembly uh, that travels from here inside the car all the way to the latch that holds the hood shut and releases it. So uh, stay tuned, we're gonna open up the hood and start digging in and remove the old one and then feed the new one in. Okay, so this is the replacement one that we're gonna put in today. This is a used replacement that we took out of a different car. Um, that's the inside part, naturally. Now, on the one that's in this car, it's all come apart in here, it's all frayed and it's all degraded. So we're gonna remove the old one and then install this guy right here. So what we're gonna need to do is locate the end of it, which is right here. That's where it goes in to the assembly. Uh, I can tell right away that it's actually not installed properly at the present time. Let's angle that light there. So it's it's not sitting in the way it should be. It's it should be in that little that little groove there, and it's not. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the the hood latch. So these are 10 millimeter bolts. So we're going to do that. Then we can have a good look. Uh, get this thing disconnected properly and then hook the new one on and then we'll reroute the new one uh, as we go. Uh, where's this thing come through? So this, this here is the release cable that runs through here. So we're gonna, we're gonna get it loose and free. underneath here. So what it does is it actually travels into the inside of the car through the bottom of this here. This, uh, I'll put the light on it for you. There we go. It goes right in through the bottom. It's, it's obscured. You can't see it, but, uh, but that's where it goes in and out. It's, you know, right through underneath where the big loom of wires comes through right underneath is where it's coming through. So um, what we're gonna do is remove the old one first, then I'll show you how to reroute the new one. Those are 10 mil ratcheting wrench. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on these bolts here. Oops, there goes the socket. Last couple of turns by hand so we don't lose the lose the bolts down there. take the shroud off too. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just gonna spin this guy back on. We're gonna readjust the latch after we're all done as well. So. There we are. Okay now to get to this one there's um, there's a bolt 
right in behind everything that's hard to get to. So we're going to go in, and we're going to go up. So we're on it right now. So if we look right down this little channel here, we're on that, that last bolt right now. direction. There we go. So if you there, so we're on. It's just a matter of trying to stay on because you're on a bit of an angle trying to get in there. So right now I'm just turning it by hand because it's now that I've broken it loose it's quite easy to turn and I've got myself a ratchet and wrench it's one of the nice older style craftsman ones with the little wheel on the end of it so it's a lot easier to to do that finesse work with your fingers when you're in really tight spots so there we go so I've got that off and being very careful to grab the washer and the cap screw which actually is not factory so that means this has been a part before. So we lost it. And is there more than one in there? Let's have a look there. It's Holding that on, it should be coming right out. Oh, there's two of them in there. Couldn't see the other one because it's the same low-profile, aftermarket, rusty hunk of junk like that one instead of the rusty original like that one. So, so there's actually two of those holding this assembly on, not just one. And of course, it's quite hard to see in there because it's dark and it's quite obscured. So we'll track down the last one here. There we go. And I find when I'm working in these tight spaces, sometimes it helps just to close your eyes and visualize where you are and uh, what you're doing. And I think that just helps you to focus on, on the parts that you can't see because you can't see around corners, but you can see around corners when you use your mind. There we go. So that's the last one there. And we'll take this out. So there we are. Now we'll spin this guy off again. This is the third one. So that's the attachment. That's what it looks like on the inside. So now the now this one is actually broken, so this is the original. Comes right out just like that. It goes in the side, latches up like that. Now with this one, it's actually damaged on both ends. It's let's carefully put that there. Um, this little piece that's loose originally was attached. This is the same plastic as this little piece here that is supposed to hang in there. That's actually been pulled off at some point. And uh, that should feed directly into this channel here when it's intact. So we'll show you that when we put the new one in. So now we, we need to trace it. So we'll put the headlights up so we can have a better look at where this is going. Because it is, um, it is clipped in in various various spots along the way. That clip there is one of them. So we'll push that down. And once we've got that out, we'll start feeding it. Now. There we go. 
Well, that's what the clip looks like. Just a lot easier to unclip it if you get that out of the car first. So pull that up. Now, just going to put that in there. Now we're going we're gonna to actually go to the inside of the car now. Our 17 millimeter wrench, and it's a nut that holds this tight to the uh, dashboard. So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna undo that nut. Once we loosen it off, we can turn it by hand, like so. And that comes off. And the idea of that is just to pinch this onto the mount where it is there. So now we should be able to carefully, and it, oh, it helps if you have somebody feeding it to you on the other side. We're okay where we are here because I've got it lined up already, but um, so we'll carefully pull that through. Uh, we're actually in. But what we have to do here is we have a mount we have another clip and uh, we're all the way through the firewall and we've got that done. We just need to undo this little clip here and then this is all free and we've got it completely removed. That's an interesting style of clip. It is, yeah. It's uh, not super easy to access either. But we do have enough, we've got a fair bit of bend in this in this mount here where we can hopefully grab onto it in just the right way and then push it through. There we go. Got it. Just a matter of poking it in the right, uh, in the right direction. So that's your clip there. That's the interior clip that holds it in place. So that's the that's the nasty frayed cable holding on by a strand. Holding by a pretty good strand still, but uh, everything's so stretched out in there. One day when you need it, uh, the hood's not going to open with this. So just a good idea to replace it ahead of time. <laughs> So we've got the the wrench here. This is the 17 millimeter that we use to undo the uh, the bolt that holds it to the dashboard. But um, so I'm cupping the the wires right now. Right below there, there's a little tiny hole which you probably can't see from the angle you're on, but it's right below here, and that's where the uh, the hood release cable penetrates through the firewall and into the engine compartment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually try and feed the, the replacement one through there using my mind because I won't be able to see what I'm doing at the time. So I will do that. Oops, I think we got it. Oh, we're through, I think. Yep, we're through. Like I say, you just, it's perseverance. You just got to get it on the right angle and then go look at it from the other side. So now we've got it through, we managed to poke it through that rubber grommet, which was a bit tricky, but it's just a matter of keep trying until you get it and then try it on different angles and, you know, lube it up because that makes it easier. So now it's through. So now we got to reach our hand into that little tight spot there and grab the end of it. I got my fingers on it. And what we want to do, this is also helpful if you have two people. So there we go. So I've got the the nose of it right here now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this through here and carefully pull it through. Make 
actually, you know. We should go around. I think we'll go around. And we, the rooting as well is gonna be a consideration on this. You wanna to try to root it so it's not gonna be pushing on anything else. So we've got it through. Let's take this cover off right here. There we go. This cover actually, while we're in here, is a good thing to, to cover, to cover the cover. It's, uh, this here is the headlamp retractor relay. So sometimes if you have headlight uh, problems where they won't go up or down, uh, not always, but uh, a lot of times it's this little blue relay here. And uh, that's hidden underneath that cover, underneath the dash, underneath the hood. So once that's out of the way, then we have a little bit more room to move. We can grab a hold of this thing a little bit better. And we can kind of go in behind everything here. And we can find the clip that this actually goes into, which is underneath of this harness. So what we want to do is follow this along. Just feed it from the front. So yeah, that actually goes into this little white clip here. So that's and it's a good idea to put it in now, and that way you haven't got to go and forget and then try and find it later. And then we can just nicely feed it through. Um, that clip there, I wonder if it's... Put that aside for now. we're gonna want to do is go through here Now we're in about the right area where we want to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to reattach this clip. And what this clip does is it plugs into that hole right there. So if we... We may want to do this last after we get this attached. That way we can get the right length on the cable. So now that we've got this thing run where we want it to be, what we should do... Just make sure we, we check our routing. So because of where the headlight is and the up and down motion of the headlight, we want to make sure that this hood release cable is in the correct position so it's not going to interfere with any of the mechanical operation of this headlight. So um, when in doubt, it's a good idea to look at a different Miata just to make sure, one that hasn't been messed around with or modified before, uh, and look at where this is actually running right from day one. So if we go into the garage here, Okay, so here we are. This uh, this is a '93 Miata. This is in my personal collection. So we uh, we follow it through. You can see that's the end of the clip that we're going to put on at the end. So it actually goes into that hole. So point it out again. That one there. The end. This guy here. That's the end of the clip that holds that cable and keeps it in the place they want it to be. Now, when we're tracing the cable, we're looking. This car has a ABS and it's got cruise control and it also has airbags. So it's got a few extra things running through. But the actual cable itself is this guy right here. And it runs, oh okay. Yeah, it runs directly under, under the headlight. It's not really protected too much, so. Okay, so based on seeing that, we know we're, we're, in, the right, uh, we're in the right area.
think by feeding it through there where I just did, I think it'll help to keep the cable contained and out of trouble. And it has a natural tendency to want to be right there. Now the other thing you want to look at as well, if you're doing this on your car, this car has an HID headlight kit installed and the way this is rooted right now, it's it's interfering a little bit with this wire. Now that may not be a problem at all um, or over time it may develop a problem. So what we want to do is make sure that everything can move freely independent of this guy and we're not going to cause any problems long term by things wanting to rub against it or like that so we're going to pull it back out carefully and reroute it so it's underneath there so there we go so we're right back through again and now that's completely it's not sitting or sitting on top or moving that wire so the next order of business right there so now the comes the business of attaching this to the hood release so we put the ball in there like that and then what we want to do is we want to insert this piece into there it should just click in you can see it goes right in that channel when this a lot of me just have this little nose broken off so this is just free like the broken one we took off so now that that's in there you can see where the ball is when we pull on the other end of that, which I'll do right now while you've got the camera on it, and you'll see that tighten up, so it won't, it won't pop out. There we are. So it's all perfectly tensioned now. It's not going to fall out or slip out on us when we put it back together. So. Now we'll grab the, the bracket, we'll get that at the ready, and like I said, this clip here we'll put in last, so um, that way we can see what we're doing. So now that we've got this into position, we shall thread that, uh, that nut on first. doesn't look big enough to me. I'm actually wondering if that's a factory nut. I'm thinking this actually may not be the right nut for this. So what I want to do is actually get a better one. One that's more in tune with the factory hardware that's on the car. So uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at a different one of these and we'll, we'll just check and see if this is factory. If it isn't, let's put a factory one on. We'll make it, uh, make it perfect the way we like it. Okay, so what we've done is that was the 10 mil nut that was on here before. Now there's a certain amount of adjustment here, as you can tell, right? Because you can adjust this latch up and down and in, in different uh, directions. Now that was the one that was on there. And as you can tell, this hole is almost as big as the, uh, the flange on this. So I don't like the looks of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a different one. It's a locking one, as you can tell. It's got the... Uh, it's got little teeth on the back of it. This is a Mazda, a Mazda nut. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that instead, and that'll help to give us a better grip once we get this thing, um, you know, adjusted properly. So we're going to screw that guy on there right now. Are you a Mazda nut? Oh yes. <laughs> that's, that's one word for it. Yeah, obsessed, I think, is the other word. But, uh, so what we'll do now is we'll. Uh, Actually, use, we'll, we'll reuse these that, they, um, that were in there before. This is the, the aftermarket ones that were used to, uh, to hold the bracket on. So we'll, we'll go in there and we'll 
carefully find where they go. Thread them up by hand first. Like so. And then go back in, feel feel around with your finger, find the hole, and then just move this thing until you can get it to thread with your fingers. Oh, there we go. very hard to see sometimes. That's why I say, you know, you got to kind of get a picture in your mind of what it looks like, close your eyes, and then just go and find it. So, let's line that up. So now what we've done is we've got that in and what we've been careful to do is line up while we've been tightening this up because there's a fair bit of play in this for adjustment. So we've been conscious to look at where the bolts, the bolt holes are on the other side of this. So now we're all lined up and what we need to do is just um, thread these guys back up. But before we do, you see they're kind of rusty. I want to get some never sees and put it on there so that if it ever has to come off again it won't be, you know, hard. It'll be Put some of that on there. That'll help them to thread up nice and smooth and to help prevent rust in the future. And if it ever has to come off again, even if it's you know years and years down the road, uh, it'll probably be the, you know one of the easier bolts to get off on the car. So put a little bit of that on there. Find somebody in the records one day looking for a lot, he's gonna be happy. You never know. You know, you never know where where Miat is gonna end up or you know what they're you know what the long-term plan is for the particular car if it's you know gets restored like an old MG in another 30 years it's uh, one of those things you want to just try to make everything just a little bit better for the next guy even if it's 20 years from now well you can tell that looks a lot nicer now the new uh, the new nut that we put on there with the bigger flange it's, uh, Actually, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to leave these a little bit loose, we're going to get them tightened and then back them off a little bit. And then we're going to, because the position of this latch, um, as the cars get older, will determine whether or not your hood vibrates or not. Um, if you have a vibration, especially when the car is cold and you, it sounds like you've got a vibration from the front of the car, Quite often it's the hood vibrating while it's closed, in the closed position inside the latch. And I'll actually show you about that in just a second as soon as I get these snugged up. There we go, so just, just almost tight. What happens over time is you get enough vibration that you have, uh, where, where this hook hooks onto here like this, it'll actually wear a groove in this little tongue here. So. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on this one, but you can feel it with your finger right away. And it's exactly the same width as the latch. And what it does is, is it vibrates a little bit over time and it actually wears a groove in here. So um, to prevent that, what we can do is keep it lubricated and also adjust this latch down a couple of millimeters in order to take any play out of it so it won't vibrate anymore. And then grease the hell out of it at the same time. So. Um, so what we want to do, once we've got this there, we're going to just... I think, that's in, I think that's down as far as it will go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tighten it up, and then we'll check and see how the hood's latching, because uh, it's going to latch a little harder than it would before. It's going to sit a little lower. There, so it's not going to move. And then we'll take this guy out. Let's tighten this guy. Okay, so everything's tight. Let's we'll take the stuff out of here before we close the hood down. And we're just going to check and see how the uh, how that hood's. So as you can tell, it sits right down. There's no there's no play in it. Uh, on some hoods, you can just bump them and you can hear it vibrate. But this one, the way we've got it right now, it's down all the way, and it's. Uh, and it's quite happy and it wasn't hard to get it to latch 100%. Some of them, if you have them adjusted too low, they will not latch. You have to slam them. But this one wasn't bad at all. So 
now we're going to move to the inside of the car. And so the first first thing we're going to do here is just have a look and see how it looks coming through and we'll reinsert this clip into its holder. Make sure you do bend it back because the clutch pedal might may interfere with it if you don't get it into the right position. Right? So that will do as well. We've got this nut threaded up. We'll put this back back in here. Feed that through. Push it all the way up. Make sure that it's all the way into its holder here. And then we can tighten that nut. And that again is a 17 millimeter. Helps if you have a stubby 17. This thing's a bit long. Of course, it's, it's stiff enough that you can't thread it by hand the whole way. But uh, on this particular one. Okay, so after going through the whole drawer of wrenches, I finally found a stubby that's actually a 17 millimeter. And uh, yeah, all the other kits that had the stubbies jumped from 15 all the way up to 18 millimeters, and that's not going to do as much good. So, uh, what we're going to do is grab our 17, which is actually not as stubby as I'd like it to be, but it's definitely shorter than that big one we have there. So, that's what we shall do. So long. That's a lot better. That's so much easier to handle. easier with a shorter wrench. Yeah, we're almost there. We're getting snug now, we're almost there. You want to make sure you get this you know, tighten up properly, otherwise it's going to vibrate and fall out and make noises and stress on things. Okay, 
so it's getting tight now. So we want to, don't want to go too tight. It'll still continue to feel like it can be tightened more, but that is, there's no movement there. It's, you know, gripped on nicely. So I don't want to tighten it any more than it already is. So uh, that is the interior portion of this job is done now. Uh, now we can go back under the hood and continue to find the right routing for that cable and clip it all in where it belongs. So let's go over to the front. So before we do that, we're going to test it. Ooh, look at that. Nice. So the latch is working just like it should. It's adjusted correctly. And now we just want to make sure that we uh, you know, get this, this cable for the hood release. Uh, clipped in and in its right position. So we'll do that now. So what we'd like to do here is So that's going to clip in underneath here just like that. So what we want to do is get the hood release cable clipped into its home in either one of these two. And uh, so we'll do that. It's probably easier to do that now while we can see what we're doing. So we'll push it in. It's hard to see in this light here. There we go. That's it. Try not to get anything else in there. There we go. Perfect. So now that's in. Now we can just spin this guy around. You can see it on the other side of the rad here. So now we can see where that is right there, moving around. Now we can slide this thing, this clip down, and take our fingers and we'll just find the corresponding hole here. As you can see the end of my glove there. Now we can find the hole for this. There it is. Move the clip along so that it's in, so the cable's, you know, supported but not not being pulled from one side to, or the other. And there you are. So that's now clipped in. You can see the cable's happy. It's on a straight line. Um, it's not being pulled off kilter by this clip. It's adjusted correctly. And it's rooted the way it should be through here. And it all is well. So what we want to do is remember to put our cover back on the relay here. So it's better to clip this side on first. And the other side should clip naturally. There we are. So that's on. Now this clip also came off when we were, uh, it was actually already off, it just came adrift when we were rerouting. Now this clip I think should probably go back on. It's just a matter of figuring out where it belongs. What I think it is, is the clip that it grabs all of these things and holds them together. So we'll do that, and then, if my theory is correct, let's go right there, that there is where that clip belongs. This wire here is actually the headlight wire, but because it has the HID headlights in it, you've got a random extra wire hanging out in the firewall here, or in the uh, entrance department. So what we'll do is we'll do our best to get that out of harm's way and tuck it in, make it neat. Like that. There, so that's not going to get into any trouble there. And we are done. So we've just replaced the hood release cable. Uh, we've taken out the mechanism, inspected it, replaced um, you know bolt, nuts and bolts as needed and uh, adjusted everything so that the hood sits in the right position and that everything operates the way that it should. Another job complete.